So you've got a downgrade in terms of, or at least you're adjusting your forecast in terms of, in terms of pricing. Uh, the first quarter of this time last year, of course, was very, very strong for you guys. You're Absolutely. adjusting to that. When, yep. do you, when do you see yields improving? When do you see pricing coming back for you? Oh, well, I think we, we've had two years of double-digit growth, double-digit double uh, fares. Uh, we're now just seeing a little bit softer pricing. So the, the cons uh, consumer's obviously the big winner this summer, Tom. Uh, we've seen 15% lower fares since Q1. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're talking about fares trending materially down at the moment. It all very much depends on what the close in August and September fares look like. But our strategy has always been to fill the planes and we price accordingly. We're load active yield passive. We've got the lowest costs of any airline in Europe and we can afford to do so. Uh, bookings are very strong. We're taking in about half a million bookings a night. We're carrying around about 600,000 people a day. Uh, it's just that I think the consumer is a little bit more frugal, a little bit more cautious about how they're spending their money and they want to get away. Yeah. Uh, Ryanair is the lowest cost so we can afford to have the lowest fares uh, and we're happy to hit the traffic targets uh, and if we have to price accordingly we will do. So demand is higher but consumers are certainly a little pickier when it comes to pricing. I think how, so. how, con how concerned are you about, about the consumer right now? How much softness do you see and how long and to what extent does that prevail? Uh, we're, not, we're not hugely concerned because I mean the key advantage we have is the cost base uh, in, in Ryanair. We've got 450 million worth of fuel savings mm. already locked in for the current financial year which means our costs are only rising uh, modestly this year at a time when most of our competitors costs are, are rising quite significantly. Um, so we're in a very very strong position. We'll deliver nearly 200 million passengers in the current financial year and if we have to fly at slightly lower fares, very happy to do so. And those slightly lower fares, they continue throughout this year. Do, you, do, you, do they turn around next year? When, when do you see that turnaround? In terms well, of if, if you think logically, capacity is usually constrained in Europe. Yeah. Uh, we, we've got all of the, the, the OEMs in, in London this uh, week for, for Farnborough. Uh, capacity is going to remain constrained for some time to come. Uh, we're, we're, we're already seeing the Pratt & Whitney engine issue on the A320 operators. Uh, likely to run on for another two years. Boeing and Airbus alike are behind on the so deliveries. So that puts something of a flaw on the price uh, yeah, yeah, the I, capacity I, issue. Yeah, I think so. I mean, capacity is not going to get back to... We're, we're not even at pre-COVID levels yet. We're probably... Peak summer, 97, 98% of pre-COVID capacity. Uh, the, the, the OEMs are going to take at least four or five years to catch up on their backlogs, possibly into the 2030s. M&A is uh, taking, taking off in Europe. We've got the, the ITA Lufthansa deal. Air Europa, IAG will probably uh, get the, the green light later on this summer. And then TAP is going up for sale. So I think capacity uh, will be constrained for some time. Furs will be underpinned by that. And if you look at the, the furs that we, we had in the, in the first quarter and indeed the furs that we, that we may have in the second quarter, they're still well ahead of where they were uh, pre-COVID. Uh, we've had two years of double-digit furs, uh, double-digit uh, growth. Uh, and, and if we have to see a little bit of a pullback this year and hit the 200 million uh, traffic target, we're still going to be very profitable. We just uh, mightn't be as profitable as we thought we were where going to be. Where are you on those Boeing deliveries? Uh, we're in a better place than I'd hoped we might be at this stage. Uh, we're still running about 20 aircraft behind uh, contract. Um, but at the end of the quarter, we had 156 of the game changers. We'll have about 160, just over 160 of those by the end of this month, where we're getting one tonight. We're getting another one in this week. Um, so they are coming in more frequently uh, than they were. The quality is, is, is better than it was. And so, so we're happy with how things are going uh, in Boeing. Our focus now is very much turned towards the remaining 50 aircraft in the order book to get those in for the summer of next year, so summer 2025, uh, so that in the next financial year we can grow from the 200 million passengers this year to about 215 million passengers uh, in the following year. What was the impact from that global IT outage on Friday? Are you still feeling the impact? I, we've more or less recovered at this stage. I have to say I was very proud of our, our operations team and, and indeed our IT team. Uh, we practiced going manual at check-in in the airports. Uh, we were able to get... Uh, the vast majority, we had over 600,000 people flying with us on Friday, uh, the vast majority of those got to where they wanted to get to, albeit with, with significant delays uh, throughout the day. We, we caught up uh, some more into Saturday and we're, we're pretty much back to normal. Uh, it wasn't helped by the fact that, that air traffic control in Europe is abysmal this summer. Um, we're seeing staffing shortages on first wave flights uh, every morning from, from air traffic control across Europe and that leads to knock-on impacts. But I have to say our, our operations team and our IT team knocked it out of the park on Friday.